How's everybody doing today? Today we're going to go through vertical stretch and compression. As we go through it today, make sure you're taking down all your notes and you're filling out your WSQ at the end. We're going to go through it quickly so you guys can enjoy the long weekend and we'll go from there. So everything's already pre-written, so if you need to pause it just to copy and take notes, it should be pretty easy for you. So today we're going to talk about the A value. That's going to be your stretch and compression. Okay, remember when we have the general formula for all the functions, these are your different parts. Your A is going to be your stretch and compression. Your horizontal is going to be your H, that's your left to right movement. And your K is your vertical, which is your up and down. Okay, the A value determines whether something is vertically stretched or is vertically compressed. So you're either going to make it skinnier or wider. So if you think about it as a rubber band, when you stretch a rubber band, it's going to get skinnier. But if you let it go and it compresses, it's going to get flatter. So those are the two shapes we're kind of looking for as we go through this. So when we're defining what A looks like, we have a vertical stretch. You guys can see that right here. You have a vertical stretch when the absolute value of A is greater than 1. So if you have any number, whether it's positive or negative, you take the absolute value of it. If it's higher than a 1, you're going to have a stretch, which makes your graph or your shape skinnier. Okay, each point is going to be pulled away from the x-axis at that point. So in this example you see here with the 0 um, x value and the y is 4, all you're changing right now is the y value. So say if the absolute value of A was equal to 2 in this example, you're multiplying your y value by 2. So your 4 is actually 2 times 4, which is going to make it 8, which raises it higher on your graph, which makes it skinnier. Then you have the vertical compression, the second part. This one's a little more complicated. Okay, when you have a vertical compression, you're looking at numbers that are greater than 0, but less than 1 on their absolute value. So you can see right here, 0 is less than the absolute value of A, which is less than 1. So in this, you're going to have a decimal or a fraction that's a positive number. Okay, when you do that, you're doing the same thing. You're changing your Y value. So in this example, you would change your 4. You're multiplying it, say, by a half. That's in between 0 and less than 1. So that 4 is going to become a 2. That gives it this flatter shape. Okay, it's going to compress your shape. So here's a couple examples. Example 1, if you put a positive 2 in front of x squared, you're actually going through on your table of critical points, and you're multiplying each y value by 2 all the way down. Okay, this is going to take your original value here on your graph, your quadratic, and it's going to make it skinnier, raising these points a little bit higher, this point's going a little bit higher, and you can see how it makes your graph a little bit skinnier. On example two here, you can see your vertical compression. Okay, you are multiplying by a half. That means that your A value is 0.5 or 1 half. You're multiplying each Y value by that half. And as you do that, you're going to make your Y values smaller, which is bringing your shape down. As it brings it down, you're compressing it, you're making it fatter or wider, and that's what you're seeing here with this blue quadratic. Okay, with this uh, parabola. Okay, so that's what you're going to see in a compression. Now the last thing before we go that you guys need to see is reflection. A reflection is going to happen if your A value is a negative number. If your A value is a negative number, it's going to flip your graph upside down. It's going to change its location um, called a reflection. So if you look here, if you have a positive, say it's a positive 2, okay, your positive 2 would keep it trending upward on your parabola. If you put a negative 2, it would flip it to where it's going to be trending downward with your arrows. So a positive will stay going up. Negative is going to flip it and give you a reflection of that specific uh, function. So quick video today. Um, that's all I have for you. Enjoy your weekend. Make sure you're taking notes, filling out your WSQ, and you guys will be good. We'll see you guys next week.